And we're back uh, to our first major conversation this morning on The Breakfast. The Federal Road Safety Corps uh, has announced on, had announced on Monday that it has deployed uh, 36,224 personnel and 1,226 patrol logistics to facilitate vehicular, vehicular uh, movement during the Christmas and New Year celebrations across Nigeria. Now, the FRC's acting Corps Marshal uh, Dauda Biu disclosed this during a press briefing in Abuja. Uh, at the press conference, uh, Biu said the Federal Safety Corps uh, had maintained a culture of organizing special patrol operations codenamed Operation Zero Tolerance to road traffic crashes. For many years, he added that the measures uh, follow a series of activities that mark the holiday season to ensure the safety of lives and property of road users. Now, the FRC boss also went on to reveal at the press conference that the objective of the special patrol operations uh, during this period, which commenced on December 15, 2022, would end on January 15, 2023, and is focused on the uh, enforcement of traffic laws and prompt response to accident victims. Um, let's look at the issue of safety on our roads this Yuletide. Uh, we're glad to say joining us to do justice to this particular issue is uh, none other than Mr. Emmanuel Ekule. Uh, Emmanuel Ekule is uh, the National Court Data Roperin Foundation, which is the Network on Police Reform in Nigeria. What I'm told, rather, we have a Mr. Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst. Nick, sincere apologies for that mix-up, and, and very glad to have you on the program this morning. Hello, Mr. Nick Agule. Good morning to you, sir. Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning to you, and uh, uh, good morning to everyone. Yeah, sorry for the mix-up. Um, uh, what are your thoughts? I've always had this, you know view when i hear the police and the, the road safety uh, officials you know r ramp up the activities in celebratory periods uh, i always would ask i mean must they ramp up activities during celebratory periods are lives not um uh, worth you know saving in in periods other than the christmas easter and salah festivities um but but some would say that you know it's uh, because of the increased activity what do you say to this 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 thought uh, thank you very much for that question. My view is that it is an anomaly when the Federal Home Safety Commission and the police put up this press conference and issue this statement in the run up to a period like Christmas, New Year, salad celebrations, and all that. Because this is what is expected of them every day. It is not only during festivities that we have our roads busy. Our roads are busy all year round. Agreed, there is uh, increased traffic on some routes during the festivities. But every day of the speak, our roads are busy. And one would expect government agencies vested with the responsibility of safety on our roads to be doing their job on an everyday basis. It shouldn't be a ceremonial thing that, oh, only during Christmas and New Year, I will go and announce that I have deployed X number of men, I have deployed X number of, uh, of, uh, of vehicles and helicopters and all of that. That should be on a daily basis because Nigerian rules are one of the most dangerous in the world. Dangerous in the world in the sense that the road conditions themselves are not good. Most roads are not motorable. You can hardly drive on the Nigerian road for a kilometer without encountering a pothole. Secondly, the quality of vehicles in Nigerian roads, most vehicles are rickety. These are vehicles that have been rejected in other countries that are, are no longer roadworthy. We import them and then put them on our road. That did has become a junkyard for expired vehicles. And then the, the drivers operating on Nigerian road, most of them are quack, they are charlatans, because the government is unable to enforce a driver licensing regime 
where you must have to go to driving school, take the driving test, and pass it before you can get a license. Anybody can get a license in Nigeria. So when you have this combination of uh, three factors, it makes Nigerian roads one of the most dangerous in the world. And you will expect government agencies vested with the responsibility to be carrying out this special operation on a daily basis to prevent Nigeria from dying. Because a lot of Nigerians are being maimed or are being killed on our road or not really entirely preventable at them. So this is my view about this statement that has been issued by the Road Safety Commission. Okay. Uh, how would you, you know, respond to the reports that um, a total of road accidents recorded were 3,282 in the second quarter of 2022, I mean, it showed progress, uh, the, being that there was a decrease of 1.88% from the first quarter in 2022. I mean, shouldn't we be giving, you know, um, the accolades to the agency? I, I, I don't even believe the statistics that these people push out. This Nigeria, 200 million people, at the sea stage, and the FCT, you are counting accidents of 3,000. That should be our daily accident count. Maybe perhaps what they consider an accident is different from what I would view as an accident. For me, I view an Okada man hitting somebody or falling with his passenger on board as an accident. It is indeed an accident. When another car brushes another car, or hits another car, or hits a pedestrian, it's an accident. And if you think about Nigeria, as big as we are, as populous as we are, that you are not going to have 3,000 of such incidents around the country on a daily basis, then it is, it, 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 you are not being uh, honest with the statistics. So if the Road Safety Commission is saying there were 3,000, accidents in what and all of that. Those, those statistics are dodgy. They are dodgy because the road conditions in Nigeria have, in Nigeria have not improved. The vehicle quality has not improved. The driver quality has not improved. So what factor will exactly mitigate against accidents in Nigeria? There is nothing. As I'm speaking to you now, there are people who are driving for the first time in their life. First time, very first day of driving, and they are on a major road. Major road without even the lunar sign on their vehicle. That is how it is in Nigeria. Elsewhere, like in the United Kingdom where I live, before you are licensed to drive, you must take three different examinations. You take an examination, for, for the theory, take an examination for the simulator with the other perception, and then take an examination for the practical in the room. Before you take that examination, you must go to driving school. So that at the end, before the government issues you a license, you must be competent. There are people that have written that examination for 10 years, and they cannot qualify as a driver. So those who are on the road are very competent. They understand the rules of the road. And therefore, it is like every driver is a professional. And they understand each other. Unlike in Nigeria, where it's not about anybody can get into a vehicle to get onto the road. So if the road safety is not taking action to enforce driver licensing for instance, and we haven't fixed our road, and we have not made any policy about the quality of vehicles that will be on our roads. How can we experience a fall in accident? So that the statistics is dodgy. That's my view. Uh, uh, Mr. Agule, a very interesting, uh, 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 you know, example or comparison with what pertains in the UK, where it's so hard, like you said, to uh, be licensed as a driver. <laughs> I also equally know people who've been uh, their whole lives, uh, people in their thirties and forties, they have not passed that exam. They're not driving. <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, what role do the citizens, the, the, the drivers on our on our roads have to play in in uh, the action? Sorry, let me, let me, can I say something? Yes, please. There yes, are please. some voices.
Miss Agulia, are you there, please? Stop talking. Then I will hear you. All right. Sorry about uh, that. Uh, apologies yeah. for that. Yes. Um, uh, uh, what role do the, the 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 drivers on our roads in Nigeria have to play uh, in all of this? I mean, sometimes on my way to work, I have to get down uh, off the car to control traffic because someone who is not supposed to drive against traffic, what we call one way, has put his head there. And then some other people who are keen uh, for fuel out. You know, it's it's crazy. You have to beg people to do the right thing so that traffic can flow. I'm sure you, at one point, may have had to come down to control traffic. <laughs> you know, so um, do we? Do we also have, in terms of accident now, not traffic congestion, but accidents? Do we have an an attitude that makes the problem worse? Okay, so anytime I have conversation with people and they say that Nigerians are lawless people, and they say that. Nigerians have a, a kidnap problem that we are our own enemies, we don't do the right thing and all of that. I disagree with them vehemently. Why I do that is that we mistake the sanity we see in other places. Like you arrive in New York now, and you see that people see red light, they stop, yeah, they are moving speeding, they are not parking anyhow. You know, and all of that. We mistake that to mean that the people's attitude is good, that the people on their own are behaving well. It is not correct. The truth of the matter is that the New York Police Department have put architecture in place to get to you if you break the traffic rules. If you beat that traffic light, there's a camera there that takes a picture of you. But only in a matter of days, you will see the full force of the New York Police Department at your doorstep in a letter. That letter can eventually land you in prison if you don't handle it well. Implement the same thing in Nigeria, and Nigerians will even obey this far better than the New Yorkers are doing now. God made man to be wrong with the law. For those who are Christians, they understand the step. One, in the Garden of Eden, God made man. Two, God gave man the law. Three, man broke the law. Four, God brought consequence management, law enforcement, into the Garden of Eden. Places like Nigeria that are not doing well, we are doing the first three, doing nothing about the poor. When you go to places like Canada, France, UK, Germany, they are doing the fourth. That law enforcement, that consequence management, the stronger it is, the more sane a society is. So if you appear in London today, and you see how well people are behaving, the metropolitan police have got cameras in all the places watching the people. Watching you, you mess up, you see the government. That is the problem in Nigeria. We have all surrendered our individual sovereignties to leaders. But the leaders are not doing their job. Show me the cameras on the road watching people in Nigeria. People beat the traffic light and don't cut me. And therefore, why would they forbid it? If you remove a uh, 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 camera off New York Street, there will be anarchy in New York. You can bet anybody on that. Remove cameras and the metropolitan police from London Road, and everybody will be beating those traffic lights there. So we just want government to do their work. Well, there let, is nothing about uh, it. Nick Agule. Man is meant to be led. The Nick quality Agule. of leadership is having the quality of man. Nick, let's quickly, um, you know, talk about what we can do uh, as a people and those who are you know, road users, everyone, because all hands must be on deck at the end of the day. Now, vividly for the first quarter in 2022, uh, the report from the MBS that 1,834 persons lost their lives in 3,345 road accidents that happened in three months. So uh, we're looking at the first quarter, January, uh, February, and March. Well, moving forward. What exactly do you think, especially at this period, because people are going to travel and you can't tell people not to, you know, travel. A lot of people will still use the roads and what have you, other means of transportation. But I'd like to ask you, what kind of practice and behavior should um, stakeholders, those who are, you know, passengers and those who are, you know, controlling these vehicles engage in to ensure that at least, you know, 
the date, the death rate actually reduces. Yeah, well, what, what I would what I would advise as, as we run up to the festive uh, period is that yes, the people have the job to do, but drivers also have their own job to do. There's something that is called defensive engineering. You look after yourself. You take everybody on the road and not knowing anything. You are the only wise one on the road. And you avoid situations. You have to drive safe. Because some of the, 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 the drivers we have on the road, I sometimes wonder if they have kept the original of their lives at home and they are driving with a photocopy. Because the kind of dangerous overtaking that you see, the kind of uh, PD that you see, you know, if you are in the society, the government has speed cameras. They have speed, speed cameras on the road. If you over speed, they know. But in Nigeria, we don't even have those things. So people should just take responsibility for themselves. Yes, you are traveling for the festive period, but arrive safe. Arrive in, in, in one piece. You have a family that is looking up to you. You have your life. And then you have the lives of other road users. Because a lot of accidents that people experience is not their fault. It is a rogue who runs into them or something. So we need to, on our own, also play safe, especially during this period. So that uh, if it takes you um, three hours to drive from Lagos to Badon, so be it. Why are you trying to make it to 30 or 45 minutes and then lose your life or involve yourself in an accident in the process? So this will be my advice to all of us who are on the road during this festive season. Mm. So yes, the government is not there. They let us take responsibility and keep ourselves safe. Yeah, but but in the case of speed limit, because I mean, there's there's this a measure of uh, you know how you should drive speed limit for when you are driving within the city. Uh, and when you are actually driving outside, we're talking about the highways and then, you know, the major roads within the city. So um, how, what else can government do at this point in time? Do we need government to, you know, have the officials on the road to ensure that people are not driving, you know, beyond s speed limit? What exactly can be done? That the government just has to do their work. You know, there is a systemic failure as far as uh, driver licensing, motor licensing is concerned in Nigeria. Like in the UK, every vehicle that is more than three years old must go for MOT. That MOT is the process where you check the vehicle and certify that the vehicle is capable of being on the road. The same way I have already described the driver licensing process. When we have people in Nigeria, we have all these offices, we have all the laws. People who have taken on jobs to do these things, we just go ahead and do their job. There has to be a process to know if someone is licensed to drive on the road or not. And there must be process that you must go through the mill and pass your driver license in examination before you are licensed to drive on the road. These roads belong to the government. And only the government has the responsibility to certify people to operate on the road. That is the way it happens elsewhere. And government in Nigeria has to begin that. You know, it's never late. Because if they start today, there are lines that will be saved in this process. Because driving is a very dangerous activity. In driving, you can lose your life easily, acting like in a split of a second. And once you make that mistake, you can't recover from it. It's not like when you are in an office, you make a mistake on paper, can't sleep. So elsewhere, the government protects the lives of those who are on the road. We are not seeing that in Nigeria. We need to begin to see that. All right. Uh, Nika Gule, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Nice. All right. Yeah. And uh, we will be taking a break now. When we turn, we talk about more issues. Um, looking at what the um, House of Representatives has to say about uh, the CBN governor and his invitation to answer questions on... Uh, uh, the CBN's policies. We have a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.